Program complete. Enter when ready. Welcome back to almost a Retrek review. This week, we're talking about season one of Star Trek the Animated Series. We're going to do the like award ceremony that we do at the end of our normal podcast called What Does Caleb Think? So that's what we're going to do. So let's get into it. Caleb. Caleb. So for season one, we only covered five episodes of like 16 or something episodes, (laughs) but that's okay. So first we're going to take on the Erica Ortega award for the most unlikable. So for episode beyond the farthest star, you picked the green energy alien that came from the planet. Or the mm. ship, I guess. For yesteryear, you picked the Vulcan kid bullies. Oh, yeah. From the Lorelei signal, you picked Thela, the main like head lady. For more triples, more trouble. Yeah. <laughs> more <laughs> triples, more troubles. You picked Cyrano Jones. And lastly, for the slaver weapon, you picked the slavers. So that's what you picked for season one. So, Caleb. Who gets the most unlikable award? Man, that's a tough one because the gas creature from Beyond the Farther Star is unlikable, but he also is sympathetic. It's true. Um, the women from the Lorelei signal are not sympathetic. They are unlikable. Um, so that's that's a good one. And man. Cyrano Jones, I just, I really don't like him. Yeah. I gotta go, I gotta go Cyrano. Yeah. He's unlikable. Whether he's drawn or whether he's live action. Terrible. Yeah. When you don't like a character, you don't like him. Yeah, and I really don't like him. (laughs) It'll be funny if uh, in years to come or you know, change it from the Erica Ortega Award to the Cyrano Jones. The Cyrano Award. Jones Award. Wow, now that's a good idea. Yeah, because <laughs> do I like do I like Ortega's more than Cyrano Jones? I, I probably do. Yeah, I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> for Beyond the Farthest Star, for the most unforgettable ward, you had Chekhov. <laughs> then for yesteryear, you had the Aurelian, the bird uh, officer. Mm. Oh, wow. I forgot. Then the Lorelei <laughs> <forgot>. signal. <laughs> the Lorelei <laughs> signal. You had Sulu. For more triples, more troubles, you had Lieutenant Kyle in that one frame grab. Oh, shoot. Yeah. And then for the slaver weapon, you had the meat testing Kazinti. <laughs> Well, okay, so so here's the thing. So this is most forgettable, right? So yeah, this is the um, Elizabeth Cutler Award. I gotta say Kyle because I think that's like the only time you see him. You only we only saw him twice. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, other than the joke of Chekhov not being in it, which is more yeah. jokey. But I know I what know. you mean. Like we do see Kyle, but he's only. He's in reality. He's in I think one episode that we watched, and then the other. Clip it's that like it's, it's just it's a, a goof. yeah it's a it's a bad editing error yeah right so it's yeah. got to be Kyle plus he has he was rocking that new mustache yeah so he just Gone. blends right in yeah <laughs> and he's been like different ages in all like all the episodes. shows that have shown him as a character so it's got to it's got to be yeah yeah I like him he's pretty forgettable okay then you have the best alien award. In mm-hmm. Beyond the Farthest Star, you have Erex. Erex. <laughs> then you had, in yesteryear, you had the La Macha. La Macha. Oh, that. Yeah. yeah. The Godzilla, the Godzilla monster. Roaring thing. Then in the Lorelei signal, you had Erex again. <laughs> and then in More Troubles, More Troubles, you had the Glama. Oh, man. Yeah. And then in the slaver weapon, you picked a Gazinti. Oh, 
So who gets the Mugatu Award for season one? I'm going to give it to Eric's. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> nice. he's actually a part of Starfleet and he's a part of the crew, which is cool. It is cool. The other ones are just like, you know, weekly creature feature. Obviously, there's going to be some kind of yeah alien. But to have like an actual crew member be this weird thing that we've never seen or probably ever see again. I don't. <laughs> I think I think the again, you know, because it's animated, I do think the species shows up again in lower decks. Lower but... decks, right, great. So forty years. Yeah. <laughs> Sixty <laughs> years from now. You figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. MVP award. Beyond the Farthest Star was Kirk. Yesteryear was Spock. Lorelei Signal was Uhura. More Tribbles, More Troubles was Koloth. The Klingon captain. Mm. Oh, wow. That's a good and one. And the yeah. slaver weapon was uh, Spock again. Mm. So who gets the Trip Tucker Award for being the MVP of season one? I got to go with Spock. Yeah. He's good. He's, He's consistent. Yeah. To say he's really solid in like yesteryear and the lower yeah. cycle, like a lot. So yeah, he pretty much stands on his own in yeah. yesteryear. And uh in the slaver weapon, I mean it's pretty much he's in charge. So yeah. I like that. Yeah, he's a good choice. Because even though yeah. like Ahura takes charge and like rescues them all, Spock was still like contacting them. He was, you know, he he was like moving everything forward so yeah yeah i like it the best action sequence in beyond the farthest star we have kirk rolling out of the way of the automated bridge defense beam (laughs) yeah (laughs) and yesteryear we have spock nerve pinching the lamacha (laughs) and lorelei signal we have spock crawling up the steps Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. In more trouble, more <laughs> tribbles. We have Klingons attacking the two grain ships and the Enterprise at the same time with their new weapon. Oh yeah. And then in the slaver weapon, we have Spock's drop kick to the chuffed captain. <laughs> chuffed to bits. I'll go with the uh, tribbles episode. The um. The Klingon like battle stuff was cool, like in space. Yeah, like they were shooting at the uh, shuttle, and then they were using the new weapon. So that was all pretty. I like pretty it. Pretty yeah, action, action, actiony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, you got to see a lot of different stuff in that episode that wasn't like the norm. Yeah, for some sweet ship stuff for Beyond the Farthest Star, we had the life support belts. Mm-hmm. And yesteryear, you had the Vulcan like cityscape, like the whole surface of Vulcan being shown. Oh, yeah. In the Lorelei signal, we had the shot of the Enterprise going slowly as Scotty sings his song. No. Farewell to my fatty <laughs> lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In more troubles, more troubles. You had the stasis beam of them like shooting. You like the new like Klingon technology of like shooting the ship and oh yeah, the new ships. beam, yeah. And then in the slaver weapon, you had the stasis box. Mm. So what gets the NX award for being some sweet ship stuff in season one? Yeah. So this is going to be the first one that's not on my previous list. I like it. In retrospect, I think that the coolest like ship technology thing that we saw in season one God. is the Copernicus. Ooh. Yeah. I think that's a pretty sweet shuttle. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's a really neat design and obviously like different, like just anything different than like the same exact thing. Yeah. It's nice. I like it. I, I like the design of it. It seems like it's longer too. Mm-hmm. And I like how they just like have it now. And then like you said, <laughs> you, like, you never see it again. No. 
I think so they, uh, I think in the description or maybe in the episode, they just they discussed that it was like a long range shuttle. Oh, so it meant to go like really far distances, and they just store it like way under deck. <laughs> they just put it way in the back, like nobody. Way, they store it way lower decks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. I like it. I like when you go off, go off chapter. I enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I I would like to see if they make a model or like a three D print of it. That would be cool. It's probably out there somewhere. I would assume yeah. that's the stuff that I gravitate to. Is like, and you probably have gotten that impression because like the only three D printed painted NX I have mm-hmm. is oh. the one I painted the Mirror Universe logo on the top. And it's just cool yeah. because it's like I, I gravitate to stuff that's not like super, yes, like recognizable, super like the main one. I like like these offshoots of stuff. I agree. So yeah, I love I love the Galileo. Yeah, like it's great. But like the Copernicus is is like a a pretty cool ship, and it doesn't get utilized as much as it should. So yeah, I like it. Next. Yep. We have the big cheese, the cheesiest award. So for Beyond the Farthest Star, you had bones, just bones in general. In that episode, you found them cheesy. In yep. yesteryear, you had the running animation of both young and present day Spock in the desert. In the Lorelei oh, wow. signal. Yeah, in the Lorelei signal, you had the computer having to like sing at the computer. In more tribbles, more troubles. You had the fact that the sh- the that sh- the inhabitants of Sherman's planet needing more food. That was cheesy. Too. Again, yeah, yeah, again. yeah. Get out of here. You grow your own food or leave the planet. You know. <laughs> yeah, and then the slaver weapon. You had the the Kazinti telepath's voice was the cheesiest. My- <laughs> yeah. So I could literally just say in general that that voice is the cheesiest because it was in a few episodes. I think you said it was one of the main guys. I think it's James Doohan doing it. Yeah. So them just that just that voice. Yeah, because it's even the same voice as the oh baby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think just that voice in general is pretty cheesy. Yeah. It's got to be because that episode was so funny <laughs> to me when they're like these cat, you know, these saber tooth cats. Are like, I got but the captain in the in the cargo in the cargo hold. Yeah, like read his mind, tell us what he's thinking. He's like, oh, he has yellow teeth and he's <laughs> and he's eating roots. Oh, it was like, oh, what is this, Rick and Morty? It was like so, <laughs> like off the rails. I was like, yeah, wow, that's not it's that really is not the voice, and it's so it's so different from everybody else it really is you know so it really is so we have the best scene of the episode in beyond the farthest star you gave tricking the green energy alien into thinking that kirk is crashing the ship that Mm -hmm. scene yeah but then it was sad well yeah the (laughs) yesteryear in yesteryear you had spock requesting that sarek try to understand him his his younger self Mm. In the Lorelei signal, you had the female crewman coming down and saving Kirk and the gang. In more tribbles, more troubles, you had Kirk covered in tribbles again. And in the <laughs> slaver weapon, you had the Kazinti blowing up. <laughs> Those are good choices. So, what gets the Star Trek Enterprise Award for the best scene? of season one and then we'll ask what your favorite episode was honestly okay so here let's do this because i do i do genuinely enjoyed this scene and i thought it was cool and it sets up the episode i like when kirk and spock come out of the transporter and okay and dorian comes on board and he goes captain i have never seen that person you with in my life I think that's cool. I think that's a cool scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We come back out and they're like, well, it's finally home, Spock. We're finally home. And then he's like, oh, I'm an Andorian and I'm your, I'm your number one science officer. 
I thought that was pretty good. That's, That's a pretty friend. good reveal, you know? Yeah. And it's cool that it's just it's just Kirk and Spock that know that it's different. Yes, I agree. That's a really great team. It's pretty great. And it's cool. And it's and, and I enjoy seeing an Andorian on board a, on the Enterprise again, you know. That's we true. Don't, we don't get and, that much. And in Starfleet. Yeah. It'll take another 70 years to see that. Well, no, I mean, honestly, (laughs) honestly, it's the first Andorian we see in Starfleet. Yeah. Because Shran isn't. He's just a part of the, the, like, whatever, the alliance that they have. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when we see other ones in the original series, they're like ambassadors. They're not, like, they're not a part of, like, in uniform. So, yeah. Thalen is like the first Andorian you see, you know, in a uniform. Yeah, he could have done great things. I enjoy that because it harkens back to Enterprise when Archer yeah. was told, like, hey, so one day, like, you guys will all be in the Federation together. Yeah. Yeah. You'll all be friends. And it's like, you know, obviously, Hemmer isn't. Anar and like he's in a uniform, but that's that's nowadays. That's now. Yeah. So. Well, that's what I mean. It sixty years before we right. see right. Andorian like in officially right. Starfleet uniform. Yeah. So yeah, I'm all for that. So now that we have all that structure, all of that, all that, dear, what would you say of the five episodes that you saw was your favorite episode? Oh. That's easy. It's got to be <laughs> yesteryear. I mean, uh, honestly, it, it's yeah, it's the best the episode. Strongest. Yeah, as good as more triples, more troubles is because it's fun and like reminiscent of the old episode, which is a good episode. Yeah. Yesteryear is like very well written and mm-hmm. interesting and fun. Like it's it's a cool concept. It's yeah. Spock heavy, and it's really cool Rich, that he yeah. goes into the past and you get to see kind of like how he grew up in his mother and father on Vulcan. Yeah. Um, and also it gave me, um, it gave me like Chris Pine star Trek mm. vibes a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, just in know. the sense of like seeing Spock like young in the past and yeah, like on a mission, you know? Yeah, you know what? It's not it's not really a far stretch to have like an older Spock from the future talking to a younger version of himself, which is what yeah. happens in the first movie. So, yeah. Well, that has been what Caleb thought of season one of Star Trek, the animated series. As always, if you like the episode, you can like it. If you disliked it, dislike it, share it with all your friends and family and Trek enthusiasts or subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss an episode like this. Uh, You can always go over to Caleb's channel. He's got many things out there. You can always check him out. I think he recently put out an interesting Ghostbusters Gremlins (laughs) crossover. Crossover, yeah. Multiverse. Wouldn't that be crazy, Will, to time travel and go back to the theater Oh, and tell me about do it. Do a double feature and see Gremlins and then Ghostbusters in the same on the same Friday. I mean, well, that's the that crazy thing. Crazy. I didn't even put it together that literally last mm-hmm. week was <laughs> uh, the 40th anniversary of Search for Spock, and then a week later, Gremlins oh. and Ghostbusters came out. So, like those three movies, wow, like a a pretty si- a pretty interesting Star Trek movie, and then those two. <laughs> pretty heavy like nerd yeah. culture pop pop culture yes. movies yeah also i think temple of doom came out like same time frame yeah right around then yeah crazy. isn't that crazy, crazy. like all of those yeah. movies yeah yeah so i mean you can always go over there check out what he is cooking he always has I'm always doing fun there. stuff yo yo <laughs> next week we're starting season two of Star Trek the Animated Series with the episode BEM. So stick around. So Mud's you, passion. Not Mud's passion. BEM. And also, yesterday, there was a poll on the channel. I'm not going to tell you what it was. You find it on the channel in the community tab. <laughs> you vote on it and so that you can let us know what you think. Yeah, so we Slide thank it. you for watching. Sorry. At the end, you'll see 
clips and cards for new latest episodes. You can go back on the channel. You can watch any of the episodes that we talked about in the animated series that we reviewed. You can get our full thoughts on all that instead of this abbreviated form. And of course, you can go even farther back. We talk about um, a good chunk of the original series. We talk about both seasons of Strange New Worlds yeah. and um, even The Cage. New, so New we got Trek a lot. Who dis? Yeah, New Trek Who Dis. <laughs> you can find it on the channel. And you can always go over to Caleb's channel too. There's podcasts over there that are not Star Trek related. No. For some good yeah. fun times. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't converted them yet, boys. So until then, <laughs> take us out, Caleb. Computer. Oh, baby. See you guys. <laughs> oh, I, th I thought you were done. <laughs>